My name is Matthew Petway, and I will be doing a virtual reading today of a passage from my book, Cuban Literature in the Age of Black Insurrection, available with the University Press of Mississippi. Today I will be doing a reading about Juan Francisco Manzano, who published the only known Spanish-American slave autobiography in 1840 in London in translation, uh, five years before Frederick Douglass. The passage today that I will read uh, explores Manzano's relationship to African ideas of spirit and cosmos that have been transculturated with Catholicism. Fleeing on foot from Matanzas to Havana exposed Manzano to grave dangers, possible disorientation from hunger or thirst, or even being taken into custody by slave hunting parties. Manzano entrusted the Orishas with his passage from slavery to freedom. As a final paragraph of his autobiography indicates, Manzano described it thus, quote, Me puse de rodillas, me encomendé a los santos de mi devoción, me puse el sombrero y monté cuando iba a andar para retirarme de la casa. Fin de cita. I knelt down and I commended myself to the saints of my devotion. I put my hat on and mounted the horse when I was going to get away from the house. Manzano's commitment to the Orishas was so devout that he commended himself to them one last time before escaping the plantation. San Antonio Legua, one of the only two saints named in the autobiography, was the most important of, quote, of his saints of his devotion, end quote. The details of Manzano's escape are unknown, since the second part of his slave narrative was either lost or destroyed while in the possession of Ramon de Palma. Whatever the particulars of his escape, running away meant the very real possibility of death, since Elegua is a near omniscient warrior spirit who possesses knowledge of Creator, of other Orishas in Egun, Yoruba for spirits of the dead, Manzano performed the rituals to please God's secretary. Elegua represents Manzano's hopes to be free, and he signifies the very real possibility that he may fall into the hands of the authorities. Just as Elegua's Janus faced ritual objects gauged in diverging directions, the Orisha may look upon Manzano with generosity and transmit his prayers to the Supreme Deity or an alternative scenario could emerge in which Elegua disregarded devout prayers, provided no assistance, and left Manzano to fend for himself. Thank you for joining me today, Cuban Literature in the Age of Black Insurrection. Ashe.